Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and in this video we are going to run through 10 taming techniques to bring your guinea pigs from being very timid and scared to more tame and confident around you. Taming is one of those topics with guinea pigs where it's a bit misleading. It's easy to believe that because they are such well-known pets and they have been domesticated for a long time, we don't need to put much effort into taming them. When in reality, a lot of time and effort is needed. But trust me when I say it is 100% worth it when your guinea pigs are super friendly and tame around you. But I thought it would be really useful to have a set of techniques that you can build into your routine. And these techniques are sort of in order so one to five are sort of for very scared timid piggies and six to ten are for when things are improving and they will take food readily from you for example so hopefully you can find where your guinea pigs lie in the scale and then use the techniques from there onwards to build into your routine and let's get started with tip number one, which is a super simple one because the interaction is sound only. So all you have to do for this one is sit down next to your guinea pig's cage and just talk to them. Yes, even if they are hiding away completely out of sight and yes, even if you feel a little bit daft chatting away to yourself. Don't put pressure on them to come out, just sit and talk about anything, about your day, what's been happening on TV, what the weather is doing, who you're latest crushes you know you get the idea do this for five or ten minutes in the early stages of taming and what it's doing is making your guinea pigs realize that your presence and your voice is not going to cause them any harm in the early stages we're less worried about you meaning good things and lots of food and treats and rewards we just want to dispel that fear they have that you are a danger to them Okay, next up is to introduce food to the equation. So chop up some tasty vegetables and put a few pieces outside where your guinea pigs are hiding. And then just sit by the cage and watch and wait. You can talk to them, whisper to them, or just sit quietly. Even if you're being quiet, they will be aware of your presence because they can probably hear your breathing. Either way, just watch and wait until your piggies pluck up the courage to come out and take that food. Food. And with this one you want to get to the point where they will still take the food even if you are talking to them. And technique number three is just an escalation of number two. So when you pop that food in the cage, instead of stepping back and taking your hand away, leave your hand in the cage. Try not to loom too much over the cage. Try and have your hand sort of extended so you're not being too much of a presence and a predator for them. And then just wait as they take the food. If they do this readily, try moving your hand a bit closer and closer to them until they will take the food when your hand is just next to it. Then what you can do is put the food in the palm of your hand, lay your hand flat on the floor in the cage and watch as they come and take the food. This always feels like a bit of a breakthrough for me as it's probably the first time your guinea pigs will get super close to you. They might even put their little paws on you. If number three isn't working for you or seems like it's a long way off, then you can try technique number four, which is what I call the long food trick. So grab yourself a stick of celery or a long piece of lettuce or some other long food that your guinea pigs like. It could even be a long dandelion leaf out of the garden, for example. Now holding onto one end of it, offer it to your guinea pigs wherever they're hiding and wait as they start to nibble the end of it. And of course, they're going to get closer to you as they eat more and more and this really helps strengthen that connection that it's you that is providing the food therefore you mean good things and you are not to be feared and what you can do as they get braver is to reduce the length of food you're offering them and eventually they will be taking smaller pieces straight from your hand and that's when you know they're really starting to get confident and brave around you 
Technique number five is a good one, but as with the others, you will need patience for it. And it's learning how to start petting our guinea pigs. First things first, it's important to know where your guinea pigs like being touched and where they hate being touched. A good starting point is from the nose up to the top of the head, maybe even the back of the neck. Usually places to avoid are around their rump and down their side. So to get started with this one, hopefully your guinea pigs are taking food readily from you. So give them some food and whilst they're eating it, slowly move your hand towards them and almost like gesture as if you want them to sniff your hand and then turn your hand over and try to stroke them sort of between the eyes, maybe going back to the top of the head if they'll let you. At this point, be prepared for them to shuffle away and maybe turn around and run. That's absolutely fine. And it's at this point when you finally get to give them some tickles behind their ears that they might realise they actually like the feeling of it and it's nothing to be afraid of. However, some guinea pigs are just sensitive and they don't like being touched that much or they'll only tolerate being petted when you have them out for lap time. Other guinea pigs love it, <laughs> like Pedro, he will come up and I'll give him some head tickles and he is in absolute heaven. So it really does vary depending on their individual character, but it's important to start that contact, then you can build up to handling them more. Okay, so these next set of techniques are more for when you're taking your guinea pig out of the cage. And number six is to start getting used to an easy way to handle them and transport them. And this one is especially useful if you're someone who hasn't owned small pets before. Basically, if you're anyone who is a little bit scared of having to reach into the cage, maybe chase them around the cage and then lift them up with nothing there to stop them falling, especially if they get a bit wriggly in your hands. So if that's you, I really recommend using a soft cosy bed or a tunnel, a cuddle sack, something soft and enclosed that you can sort of encourage them to go into, even if you have to scare them a little bit with your hands, and then you can scoop up the whole thing with them inside and quickly transport them to somewhere where you can sit down and be comfortable and relaxed and you can start a bit of lap time with them. So for starters, try and do this for five or ten minutes every day. If you've got more than one piggy, it might be best to do it individually with them, just so you don't have the stress of trying to get more than one at a time out of the cage. And then when you have them in your lap, offer them veggies, either hand feed them or just put the veggies down on the fleece blanket for them to get themselves. You might feel like they've taken a step back at this point if they are reluctant to eat and they are just sort of frozen, almost in shock. And don't worry, that is just an instinctive behavior against predators that they have. But the more you build it into your routine, they will get over that and they will start taking the food from you. And when they do, it's a really good sign that they're learning to trust you because they are taking that food even when you're putting them in a different environment. So once you've started lap time and you have more confidence with bringing your guinea pigs out of the cage, you can start petting them when they are in your lap. So again, just like you were in the cage, go for stroking them on the top of the head. You might find that they are more tolerant of it in your lap because they have nowhere to run to basically. And that leads us on to technique number seven, which is about practicing starting to handle them. So you might have had them in your lap for five or 10 minutes. It's time to put them back in the cage. But first, I want you to practice picking them up just from your own lap. So scoop one hand under their chest and support their front legs, and then scoop the other hand underneath their bottom, supporting their back legs. And from here, you can support their weight and cuddle them up against you. If they wriggle and they want to get away, don't worry too much, it just means it's going to take a bit more practice. So you could just try picking them up and snuggling them against you maybe five or so times before it's ready to put them back in the cage. And once you've got the hang of that, you can try bringing them over to the cage without using the cozy sack. So if you're walking around with them, hold them against you so they feel a bit more safe. When you're ready to put them down, just be aware that they might see the cage, they might wriggle a little bit because they want to get back in there quickly. If they do, 
this, sort of try and lower them down backwards because sometimes guinea pigs can jump out of people's hands into their cage and then they can injure their front teeth. It might sound a bit daunting at first but it's all practice to handling them so it's important that you try it out and as you get better you might even feel that you can pick them up from the cage without using the cozy sack. But if they're still running away a lot then you might want to just leave this until later on when they're a bit bigger and a bit easier to catch. Technique number eight is a fun one and I love it because it can be so rewarding and it's a step up from lap time. So it's doing floor time with your piggies. Get yourself one of those small pens or you could use old CNC cage grids or just set up a small area where you've cordoned off anything dangerous, big enough so that you can sit in with them and then they've still got some space to explore where you can put hideys and tunnels and other fun things. And then you can try hand feeding and stroking them if they will let you. Hand feeding can be really fun during floor time because you can offer the food closer and closer to you each time and eventually whether you're sat cross-legged or with your legs out in front of you your guinea pigs will put their paws on your legs they'll be stretching up and begging for that food. Technique number nine isn't really a necessary one, but it's something you might want to try with certain pigs, especially if they are very food orientated and they will literally follow food, trying to eat it anywhere you go with it. So with these piggies, you can try and teach them some tricks, starting off with lifting the food up and seeing if they will lift up onto their back legs and take the food from you that way. Most guinea pigs will do this, so it's a good thing to try. And if you think about it, they are putting themselves in a vulnerable position and learning to trust you whilst getting a reward for it. If you have piggies that will follow food around, what you could do is to try and lead them around in a circle with the food whilst you say circle, and then eventually they will just turn in a circle themselves for the food. It doesn't work for all guinea pigs, but if it does, then you can try and look on the internet for other tricks that you can teach guinea pigs and see if they'll do some of those as well. And technique number 10 applies to different situations and it's just to recognise when your guinea pigs might be developing bad habits and to sort of come to a compromise with them and try and work around it. So for example, one thing that people tell me a lot is I have my guinea pigs for months and months and still every time I come into the room they run away. So this might be a bad habit they've got into for various reasons. It might be that people are coming in and out of the room a lot. They don't know whether it's going to be on expected noises or something's going to happen that might scare them. If this is the case what you could do is to get people to come into the room more quietly or talk as they come into the room. You yourself could every time you go into that room give your guinea pigs some fresh treats to show them that they don't need to go and hide and run away. Obviously that's only one example but as your guinea pigs become more tame yet there's still a few behaviours or bad habits you don't want to see. Focus on those, think about how you can get around that behaviour. Usually food being involved will definitely help things. And that makes up our 10 techniques for taming guinea pigs. Drop us a comment below to let me know what you're working on now with your piggies or what areas you'd like to improve in. And if you've got more tips and tricks of your own then please share them for others to read. And I'm going to leave you with two more videos to watch. The first one is 15 things you should know before getting guinea pigs. The second is 10 ways to keep your lazy guinea pigs entertained. So that's all from us for now guys. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next one. Bye bye!